Hey everyone, Flo from Up to Lands here, and today we're going to talk about gear. Since the start of 2022, I've been adding a few items to my kit, so I thought I'd make this quick video and share them with you. Some of them I have already made videos about, but the others I've actually never featured. Before I start, be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. The first one is the Omnicharge 20 Plus. This is essentially a battery pack but much more powerful and versatile than the common ones you would use for your phone for example. This is a great portable power solution for us filmmakers and photographers. You can charge laptops, cameras, phones, etc. I can charge my 6K Pro batteries directly from it and since it has a proper AC out you can actually plug in your laptop if you want to. And it even has a wireless charging pad at the top for your phone. I can also use it to power my Fuji X100V or to charge my drone batteries for example when I'm out on a shoot or hiking for a long time. It's nicely built, it doesn't take too much room in my bag. Between the AC port, DC in and out, as well as USB-C and A, and a wireless pad, you can pretty much charge anything you want. And you also have a display that tells you what you're using in terms of power for each of the ports. I always wanted to get a portable power solution for my gear, but they were too bulky or too small, so this is a good mix for what I do. If you spend a lot of time outside or carry a lot of gear when moving around, I would highly recommend it. It's a piece of gear that I found myself taking with me quite often just to be sure that I have enough power for the day. If you're interested, make sure to check out the link in the description. The second one is a Mac Studio. This is probably my biggest purchase of the year. I've been waiting for a computer like this for a very long time. I have always been more of a desktop person. I need a MacBook of course since I travel a lot for work and in general but I always prefer to use an iMac when I can. My current MacBook Pro 16 has been great, but working more and more with 6K RAW files and even 12K, I needed something more powerful so I wouldn't spend so much time rendering and exporting. So when they announced the studio, I decided to get one as it ticked all the boxes for me. It's ridiculously powerful, roughly 3-4 to four times faster than my spec'd up MacBook Pro, it has all the ports that I need, and it's small and light enough that I can take it with me if I really needed to. Also, I already had a 27-inch LG ultra-fine display for my MacBook, so this was a no-brainer for me. Another reason is I always hated that I had to bring my only computer with me everywhere I went, and buying another MacBook just for travel didn't make sense financially. Now I will keep my MacBook when I'm traveling for work or personal, and the studio is just a work machine. I will make a review soon once I have used it long enough, so stay tuned. The next item is the iFootage Cobra 2 Portable Mini Tabletop Tripod. Whilst I have a few normal sized tripods, I wanted one that was small enough to carry anywhere and sturdy enough to handle lights and cameras. This one is ridiculously compact when folded and the payload is 17.6 pounds or nearly 8 kilos which is pretty amazing for that size. This means I can use it with my cameras, fluid heads, mics or lights. At the moment I use it a lot with my light wand from Nanlite for my talking head setup. As the name suggests, this one is meant to be used as a tabletop tripod, which is what I do when I film myself doing cinematography breakdowns, but it also works well when traveling and hiking. It's super robust and is a nice addition to my kit. As always, all the links will be in the description. Next we have the Nisi VND. For my type of work, which is mainly documentary, outdoor, travel and licensing content, a VND is quite handy, if not essential. I prefer to use VNDs when I'm hiking for example, or when the location only allows limited gear or when I have limited time for that specific shot or project. Having a VND always with you means that you can be prepared for any situation. It is perfect for my cameras that don't have internal NDs like my BMPCC 6K or my Canon EOS R. With this Nissi one, the build quality is great, there is no X effect and it is color accurate. I love that it also included a case, a pouch and a lens cap. Feel free to watch my full review. The next item is a lens, the Meiki S35 25mm T2.1. I've been shooting with the S35 line for a while now and I absolutely love them. I started with the 35mm, then the 50 but this 25mm is the one that I was really waiting for since the start. I love shooting between 24 and 28mm as in my opinion it allows you to shoot pretty much anything. I absolutely love this Meiki 25mm. The image is beautiful, it's nicely built, there's a good weight and size, it's great to use and the focus ring and aperture ring are super smooth. And like I mentioned in my full review, this might actually be my favorite lens alongside my Vintage Contact Zeiss 28mm. If you own a Super 35 sensor camera and are thinking of getting your first cinema lens, then this is the one I would recommend. 
And the last item is also a lens. 2022 has been a great year for lenses so far and this one has to be the most exciting for me. This is the Greyjoy 50mm T2.9 anamorphic lens. I've been wanting to shoot anamorphic for a very long time but it was either too expensive or I didn't have the correct camera or mount. For me wanting to shoot anamorphic was more about the look and feel rather than fitting more in the frame or having crazy flares. I really like the image that came out of this 50mm. I used this lens in a lot of situations and so far I was pleased with it every time. It has such a distinct feel to anamorphic footage. I love the soft edges, the sharpness especially in the middle, the bokeh when shooting wide open, and also like the fact that the flares are not too crazy with this one and feel somewhat natural. The lens also feels solid and is very nice to use. Shooting anamorphic is so unique and refreshing for me that I approach and compose my frames a bit differently and I really enjoy this. If what you need or want is an anamorphic lens with a reasonable price, I would definitely recommend this lens. The image is beautiful and at one point in times gives you a great look. I have always been a fan of the anamorphic look and being able to finally have this as part of my kit is awesome. Make sure to watch my full review where I talk about my experience shooting anamorphic for the first time and what I like and don't like about this lens. That's it for me for today guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this gear video, don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments what piece of gear you got this year that you really enjoy. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.